What is your strategy that you're using on trading options and how much of your activity is related to that? So first of all, I, a very small amount of, of what I have um, is what I risk on options trading, even though I know a lot about options trading. Um, so, so in general, um, a good rule of thumb is to never, um, you know, sort of invest or speculate with what you can't afford to, to lose. Um, and the corollary to that is to be able to quantify that loss so you know what you're talking about. It's like you don't go into Vegas and sit down at a blackjack table with like an open checkbook. Some people do, that's not a good strategy. <laughs> um, and so I would say a very small portion of, of, of what I have, um, I even use um, in terms of my trading in the options market. But I also, in terms of option strategies, um, I, I never allow myself to be exposed more than what I know. So for example, I, um, I only buy options, I don't, I don't short them, so I don't, I don't run the risk of um, what could happen if a position goes way against me and I have to sort of figure out how to make up for that loss. I know exactly what my loss is. So if I buy a 20 cent option, um, I know that at most I'm going to lose that amount of money, 20 cents times um, however many contracts I bought. Um, and so I'm, I'm evaluating the risk of the loss before I enter the trade. So that's one thing, like considering what that downside value is to me, and then over the course of an options portfolio, just incorporating that knowledge with how I trade. And in terms of um, how I look at the upside, there's a lot of things that I look at in terms of even selecting um, which option, which name, which day, um, and, and how much to put into it. So if I don't feel like there is, based on my analysis, a, a tremendous amount of upside, I'm not also going to invest a tremendous amount of that portion of the money that I've set aside to trade. So I, I actually have a very rules-based strategy on what I do, and I tend not to, or at least I try not to, get emotional about it. So I'm, I'm, I'm actually comfortable taking losses that I've been able to calculate could happen, um, more comfortable taking gains. Um, but, but in terms of balancing those two things, um, I, I tend to stay within my, my role. So I, I, I don't tend to, for example, put on new positions at the end of the day because for the most part, the, the institutional trading at the end of the day f is, is harder to recognize in, in terms of patterns. And so I don't think, for example, it's a good time to trade. So the few times I've ignored my own advice haven't been great trades. So it's like, okay, well, just listen. Rem remember what you said to yourself? Um, you only trade in the morning. So I, I, I only tend to trade now in the first half hour um, in the morning. Occasionally it bleeds into an hour depending on what's going on. But that's when I notice the most amount of, of momentum and volume going into the way that I trade, which is that I want to be in and out. I don't want to hang out. Um, and I don't want to not watch. So, so the way I trade is based on both the way I organize my time, but also the, the activity in the market. That's also when a lot of the institutional um, buyers and sellers are in, as, in and out as well. So I'm taking advantage of kind of what I know they're doing and what I see them doing from the standpoint of the market itself to where I feel comfortable trading. And then I, I keep a very solid, if it goes down by 20%, like you're out of the trade and I'm fine about that. Now, if it, if it goes up by a certain percentage, I, I bank the rest, um, that upside, and then I sort of move on. You aren't stuck. There is something you can do to claim the life you want. Wealth breakthroughs can change everything. Yours is waiting. For the first time ever, Mastering Wealth is about to go from hard to easy with Wealth Breakthroughs.